That was a beautiful introduction. You know, only get introductions when you live long. <laughs> and I've been around a long time, but that was certainly very beautiful and I appreciate it. I think it's wonderful that the president of the university, as well as the chairman of the board, uh, both are supporting this and come to the attendant. It's really quite unusual for a school. But I'm honored too because uh, with all the leadership that's shown in, not only by Alan, because Alan has done a marvelous job, but also now restarting the Hall of Fame. Roger called me um, about two weeks before he passed away. He was my student, and I do remember where he sat, 50 years ago in my class. <laughs> and uh, I was very fond of him. When he was ready to retire, he didn't know this, but that, that they called on me and so that I was behind the stage, and uh, we roasted him a little bit, and then I walked out and surprised him. We've always been very close, and I think the world of him. He did know, and I told him uh, just, a, just those few weeks before he passed away, that uh, my book, uh, they, were run out, they had run out of copies of my book, and uh, I had said to him that the publisher has asked me to write another final, final chapter. We'll call it a final, final chapter. And the reason I need to do that, uh, and he knew this, was that I had received a letter from President Ford four days after he died. And they think it's, it could be the last letter that he wrote. And so they wanted this to be known. And I told Roger this. And I said, and also, Roger, your picture is going to be in that final, final chapter. So he was very, he was very appreciative and thought that was very nice. I can't begin to tell the stories about the, 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 the baseball team or the basketball team, either one, because I traveled with them a lot, and you learn a lot. And the one reason that I traveled with them, actually, as president, well, I might tell you that when I did become president, uh, one of the sports writers downtown said, oh, good grief, we're going to have a woman president now, we're not going to have any sports. And, and I later had the pleasure of speaking to him. And, and actually, became, we became good friends. But I said, I started out. I, my brother was a four-letter man in college when four-letters meant something else than what it means right now. And also, when I was five years old, and my father was, was coaching a, 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 an amateur American League team, I started every game on the bench with him. I was five years old. I got so I'd call, you know, and I'd, I'd even say what the pitch was. And then the fact, too, that I was, I was raised in the sports atmosphere, even though I was in the arts, I was certainly raised in this, so uh, I loved it. And uh, when he said that, when this, uh, this reporter said that, oh, yeah, we're not going to have any arts now, I've had more fun proving to it. Now, at the end of the first year I was president, my husband became very ill. He had been radiated at an atomic drop. So uh, in the meantime, um, I really couldn't get as involved with, with, the art, with the sports as I'd like to. But then the following year, as he had passed away, I really was, Jenny was my family and my students and, and the graduates I knew. And actually, they were very, everything was, everyone was very helpful to me. Many in this room, very, very helpful to me. And so I went ahead and ta traveled with them lots to, to particularly to certain, uh, when, when it was a, a major event. Well, I got myself into some pickles, and I got them probably into some too by being with them. Because I, I did always start down on the bench and the, with the NCAA rules the minute the game started, I didn't want to go up and sit in the presence box. And I did that in the, in the like, well, likewise in baseball. I'd try to get down in the dugout, and then I'd, then I'd move up. But the one thing that I did with each one, I tried to give each player a hug at the beginning. They got superstitious, many of them. So if they didn't get that hug at the beginning of the game, then uh, they were afraid they were going to lose. Well, actually, we were in Birmingham on this particular instance. And uh, it was a very important game. And you'll see the picture that is a, is a result. But at any rate, um, I was late getting there. My plane was late. And I got down there, and we were behind. Uh, and so I went, I couldn't go down then, the bench. But I went back, and I didn't go in the in the room when they went back in, at the halftime. But I stood at the gate, and I gave me a hug when we came back. Oh, they were in mischief. They, they decided to do something. So they had come to me, and they said, you're to be at the end of the basketball court, at the end, because there's an AP 
a, a writer and a reporter and a photographer there. And you're to be there for uh, uh, an interview. What I didn't know is that the team uh, was going to pick me up, hand me the scissors to cut down the net. And uh, which did. Un interestingly enough, that picture appeared all across the country from St. Louis to New York on the front page of the Los Angeles papers. And, uh, uh, and it, where's Willie? It was Willie McDuffie that, that when they, where's Willie? Is he here? There you are, okay. It was Willie McDuffie that said, as they were reaching up like this with their arms around my knees, and he said, watch your skirt, watch your skirt. <laughs> another thing, another fun time with the baseball team was when, when uh, we had the New York Yankees. Now that was really an event. And of course, we, we had them here as a benefit in order to light the baseball field. And I'd been in contact with all of them ahead of time, and we had some great support and, and help from the politicians as well. And uh, so the night of the game, and we're downtown, and because of course we couldn't be here, because we're gonna light, we wanted to light the place. So we're down there, and I was sitting by George Steinbrenner. I really fell for George Steinbrenner. I don't know why they said all those awful things about him in the paper, because I found him very charming. Uh, and we kept in touch for a long time. But anyway, I sat there, and it was at a time when Billy Martin and George Tybrander were bantering back and forth, and uh, we never could know what was happening. And so we sat there, and actually we did pretty well. The end of the fourth inning was tied. Was, it was, there, was, there were no scores. And so uh, Steinbrenner turned to me, and he patted me, and he said, hey, this was not in the agreement. <laughs> So actually, the, 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 the players played very well, and I love to hear Terry, Terry Alexander talk about it because it was an exciting time. It really was exciting, and, and it gave us a lot of publicity. It was the first string Yankees. They were all first strings. Imagine what those kids are saying to their kids and what they'll say to their grandkids about playing the Yankees and how well they did. And actually, we struck, we struck for the leaders out, too, which was very exciting. Uh, I've got so many memories, and I, I, I think maybe sometime I think instead of writing a book about the things I've done, I've got to write things about what our athletics at teams have done. Because indeed, we have shown people all around the country what this school can do. And Alan, it's, it's wonderful. As, I, as Alan said, I have known him since he was a baby. And it was wonderful to carry Roseburg called him and asked him to come over here. Uh, it's been remarkable what he's done and the record we've already shown. Of course, we have to keep him. You know, you know, everybody in the country's gonna want him. So we've got to, to keep him as long as we can. In fact, they're, I will say, it's no secret, they're already after him. That's true. Anyway, one, one other thing too that I, I will remember, Otis Smith, when Otis was here. I, I didn't know really about recruiting. I, I, I did some recruiting with, with him quite often, but I didn't know about going and sitting in the middle of a gym. When, when there wasn't anybody else there. But we were trying to get Otis. Otis was at Forest High School. And Otis's mother was with Otis. And then the coach, and then uh, Willard Payne from here in town, and then the mayor. So we went over and we sat in six chairs in the middle of the floor. And um, it was the most encouraging thing to me. I watched that mother and I thought, this is remarkable. Because she said to us, when we were speaking about JU, she said, you know, it's great to have basketball, and we were trying to say that he'd be playing here at home, the family could hear him, it would be great to see him, and it would be great. She said, that's fine. I'm delighted to have my son play basketball. And of course, we know he's good, but I'm much more interested that he gets a degree, and an academic degree. And I thought, you know, that's a remarkable thing for a mother to say, and what a great inspiration. And I know, I know, as a matter of fact, I knew artists' mother well. What a remarkable woman she was. An artist, that's where you have that, you, you have your genes, but that remarkable woman has given you many of the things that you're being rewarded for right now. I know, I know that you know that. I know that's true. But at any rate, as I see it, we have not only had wonderful, and, I, and the students come first, we've had a lot of great professors, and we, and we uh, certainly were, were known for having a quality education. But when history is written, it's going to be written about the students and the students and what they become. And the way I measure any university, any school, if you're going to go to a campus, 
It's fine. Um, I'm, you know, I've, I'm, I've done it and I've, for years, and I did a number of evaluations for seven associations of different colleges across the country. What I ask the question is, what's that student doing after he's been graduated? That's the key of how good anyone is. And so all you have to do is listen and watch and see what our people have done and say, you know, JU's done a remarkable job because of you. So I thank you. You're, I want to thank you for what you've done for me because you've changed my life. And, and you are my life. It's not only you changed my life, but you are my life. JU is my life. And I'm proud to be that. And I'm very, very proud to be a member of this. I really am.